Hello, Tony. How are you? Well, I have some uh, video analysis from the last time we were together. Sorry it took a little bit longer than usual. I got a little behind there. Plus, um, this session produced so much video and so much information. I think it's at a critical point in um, in the in the process of whatever it is I can do for you to uh, help you get more consistent on your golf swing. And um, so I feel like it's a really important uh, lesson from this session. So I wanted to make sure that I studied everything. Uh, you know, my biggest fear would be that I would, uh, that I'd want to make some uh, changes or that I would suggest making some changes that would, uh, that would affect, have an adverse effect on some of the great parts of your swing. And I don't want to do that. I just want to be able to make some tweaks and some suggestions and some fixes and maybe some drills that will uh, help you take your already great game and make it more consistent. I think that's what you're looking at me for, so um, uh, that's what I'm going to try and do. So here's your 7-iron. These are a couple random 7-iron shots that, um, that I pulled from the whole session that we had. Caddy view and down the line, of course. And um, as it turns out, these two shots were both both exhibited the same uh, issue, which is the issue that you have of uh, hitting it a little low and to the left. In this case, of course, being a nine iron that you were hitting. As I, I said, seven iron. I meant nine iron that you were hitting um, these uh, shots tended to go higher, but they're still maybe too low for 9-iron, and they definitely both went to the left. So we can take a look. This is playing in reverse, by the way, in case you didn't realize that. But uh, we can take a look here at what it is between these um, shots that that jumps out at us. Um, so I'm going to do a little analysis work on the, um, on the videos. So... Um, by the way, I do have driver swings, too, that we did that day. But to tell you the truth, I think that these um, little tweaks that you that we're going to try and make that you exhibited in these seven iron swings are just saying it's the same thing for the driver. The driver is just more, you know, it's more extension, more tilting, more turning. And, of course, the driver, the low point of the, of the swing isn't in front of the ball. The low point of the swing of the driver is right behind the ball, so as if the ball was right out here somewhere. So other than that, the swing is pretty much the same except more more of it. <laughs> so I don't think um, at this point, uh, I, I can show you the driver swings that you had, but uh, at this point I think we used these nine iron swings. These are very representative of the, of the situation. So let's take a look first at the um, at the oops, change that off. There we go. At the um, oops, come on. Oh, I see. Sorry. At the uh, caddy view. So here's our our friendly little uh, enclosure for you. Mostly about the head. So let's take a look then at the uh, at just the uh, caddy view in relation to the head movement. As you can see, you're still moving off the ball a little bit in the backswing, but not nearly as much on these swings. But that but that does cause you to have to go back to that point. And look what happens is actually you go right through it. Anytime you have to move to try and get back to the same point, it's going to be an issue of whether or not you can actually do that. In this case, as you can see, you don't. You start in the middle, you move back up and to the right, and then down and to the left during the swing. So that's that's a number one issue is continuing to work on keeping that. See, at the beginning you stay nice and steady, and then right at the back end of the back swing you, you tend to go back and then forward. Let's see what that looks like in the... Um, down the line shot over here. It's a little easier to see straight on, but if I draw this circle here,
that's the part you can see. You see when you move, you can't tell that you're moving forward or backwards there because it's obviously toward you, toward us and away from us. But you can see that down movement there. Okay, so we're going to. And remember, I, we talked about before starting a little bit further down so you didn't have to stand up all the way and then come back down and you're doing that you uh, I would say this is a 50% improvement over the last swings that where you're not standing up as much on the takeaway but on the downswing you still are uh, bending down further to the ball bending down further to the ball by the way is what what makes you do this in the through swing see that let me uh, erase that. This arm here, <laughs> obviously, is bent. The reason why that's bent is so that you don't run your club into the ground when you get down to impact. You're actually past impact, but your body still feels like it needs to it, it needs to pull up because it's not quite sure. See where your divot is on this ball is nice. It's right in front. So it's great contact. In fact, all of your contacts seem to be really good. But this, pulling the, pulling this up like that, you're obviously doing something where your body feels like it's too, it's, it's bent down too much, and you're worried about crashing the club. So you're pulling up and turning too fast, and that's that's what's pulling the ball to the uh, to the left. Now also, you're rolling. See, you're rolling. Look at look at how much you roll your wrist right there. Well, where where actually in between there and there? Look at that wrist roll. It's not as bad as it was, but it's still rolling tremendously, right? And you're trying to time that at impact. And remember what I keep telling you is this: if you hit a thousand balls a day, that's great. You can do that, but that's where you're. You shouldn't be rolling any more than that because what is the time in between? I mean, where where actually are your wrists when it actually hits the ball? Well, who knows? I mean, that's a big move right there. So pulling the ball to the left is sometimes is not surprising since you're not exactly sure where your wrists are going to be. So, so that's one of the things that we're that we're working on, and that's why I talked to you about the uh, the short punch shot type drill and. Um, by the way, you can see where you come out. Look at where the club comes out over here, and 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 look at that that uh, left arm is bent, and your right arm is obviously bent here. So you're coming out. The club is coming out pretty low. Your hands are coming out at your elbow there. So you obviously turned a little bit fast because the club should really come out up here, up in the bicep area. That's where you should come out because that's where it was when you went back see <laughs> so but this little turn right here we're gonna get back to this but this little turn right here is one of the key elements that I'd like to start addressing and uh, this is the normal considered the normal um, shaft plane line for a swing and you see you come out way on the low side and then that hand Look at how look at this loop that your hands make coming up right in here. This whole arc right in there. Watch your hand movement. That's a big move to repeat the same every time, you know. And what good does it do? I'm going to show you more about that and compare it to some other swings. But you finally end up pretty much right on plane, which is great. Right in, right in here, your hands are on plane. The club stays on plane. Comes from the you know that that one came over the top a little bit, but um, and that was because of that early shoulder turn. But but uh, I'll address that next. First of all, let's look at this impact position over here. Over here. So impact. You actually, to tell you the truth, you and I share. This is something that I struggle with too. Is to get those hands in front of the club at impact and your hands are just right over the top of it but I'd like it to be a little bit further in front and stay in front through there that's why we started practicing that finish position so 
let me uh, let, let's take a look then at that at that uh, drill that we worked on because that was really helpful the drill and the and practicing the finished position okay hold on okay so the first drill that I suggested um, doing was this one where you just practice getting into the finished position there all your weights on the left side you haven't swung the club too far around you're standing up on your your left foot is your, your left knee is straight hardly any weight on the right toe and you get into that position right there so you were just practicing getting into that position just so you know what it feels like where you're going okay and that's as opposed to what this looks like with more of a baseball swing at the end this is a golf swing your spine is still tilted toward us and uh, here you're standing up pretty straight and your shoulders are more level and turned this is a beautiful looking finish for a golf swing this is a nice home run swing <laughs> sorry okay so at any rate you practiced that a little bit and um, it resulted in this uh, swing let me get this going here In this swing after thinking about after practicing where you were going to finish then you made this swing and voila so this is uh, this that that worked that was a nice uh, that was a nice transition you know look at that looks sort of like that practice that you did there. There. Weight's all on the left, up on that right toe, left knee is straight. And look at it, it actually helped a little in terms of rolling those wrists over. It wasn't quite as bad. You see the back, I can still see the back of that wrist. Whereas remember in the picture before, oh, here's the picture before. In this picture, when you got to that point, we couldn't see basically anything, right? So it helped a little in that regard to uh, to just picture where the finish was going to be. So that was a good move. Now next then we wanted to work on that impact position itself and uh, see if we could do any improvement with that. So we used the other drill, the uh, short punch shot drill. So in the short little uh, punch shot, weight forward punch shot drill, basically what we did was we just go a little, a little bit back. First you move your hips forward, keep your head the same. So you, that's, that's tilting. That's tilting your spine right there by just moving your hips, leaving your head in the same spot. Your hands are forward. And then you take a short swing. That's a little excessive, but it's could be even shorter than that but then you come through look at that perfect impact here perfect impact look at this now look at the difference in impact here this is a little past impact but look at the look at your hands I'll show you on the other picture but here here your hands are in front of the ball and you have a nice straight line going straight down from your shoulder all the way down with your hands in front of the ball Okay. You still have a tendency here in this drill to roll over a little bit, not as much, and then to start flipping your hands a little bit. But look how straight your arm is. Look how straight your arm stays in this drill, right, as opposed to this other one. All right, so that was the drill. Now let me show you um, when you stopped flipping your hands like that and got the idea then you came up with this drill here so let's look at this one so in this one you are practicing you see how your left hand here you can see the back of your left hand that's what you were practicing getting to that position as opposed to that position see the difference major difference in terms of flipping this club over that's what's pulling your ball to the left because you can't time that you can time this because you're not doing anything <laughs> or very little so see how that works that's going to keep your club face 
where you can see, look at, look at the difference in the club face here. This club face is, is just, is right on the arc. It's parallel or perpendicular to the arc of the club. Look at that one. I mean, that's almost parallel to the arc of the club. You've turned your arms over so much. This is hard to control. This is the way we want to do it for consistency, okay? So this is a nice, So you, and, and what you're doing here is practicing. You're practicing that finish position, okay? And then, like that, like that. So that's a great pre-shot routine is to practice that finish position. Look at that difference. Tremendous difference. Okay? Club face, closed, open. Nice. All right. So, practice, practice, practice the finish position. Then, step up to the ball. Just a short little swing here. Boom. Once that ball gets in the way, of course, things have a tendency to change. <laughs> But it's getting better. It's getting better. And that's a pretty good looking drill right there. Look how straight this arm is. Look at that. Look at that. Now that's a golfer there. This uh, guy plays on the weekends. <laughs> so look at that. That's pretty. Very, very pretty. Okay? So that's a great drill. Continue to do that drill. Uh, by the way, I also wonder whether or not you see when you do this drill and your backswing stays nice and short, watch your right shoulder. See how your right shoulder comes right back down? There's no, I, I wish I had this from the back, but that, that loop is gone, basically. Because you're going right up to there. I mean, it's a little bit, but it's not nearly as pronounced. See, you see what I mean? Your shoulder comes right back down the same plane. It's not looping around and through, and that's why you're not coming. That's why you're not turning that club over so much. Look at the difference between that and post impact here. See what I mean? Look at that. So. The drill is very important. Okay. So let me load a different one in here. All righty. Let's watch this one. Practicing that position past impact. Past impact. See the club face? Nice. You can control that. Okay. Now the real swing. Try that again. Real swing. So that's after doing the drill. You can see things are changing. That's after doing the drill. That's your original right there. See how your arms are starting to bend up here, perfectly straight here. See how much forward your head has moved here, straight over the top there. Left arm stays straight, or uh, right arm stays straight. Your weight is much further forward on this one than it is on this one. So that drill really helps you. It's a great drill. And there's a nice finish. All your weight on the left. Okay? Baseball. Golf. <laughs> okay. All right. That's pretty cool. We still have a little bit of head movement going on here. Coming back down. So... 
Got to get rid of that sway to the right. You see that that drill. If we go all the way back to the drill itself. Drill. Look at your head in this. So the drill is designed to help you feel keeping that head steady and not flipping your hands over. It works, man. It works. Let me show you a nice swing after doing all these drills. This was... Watch this swing now. Pretty. Much better. So if I could get you to move those hips forward without moving that head forward, that would be great. But you notice your your shoulder is not nearly doing the roundabout there. It's coming right back down. Impact hands in front of the ball. Much better. The frames are a little off, but much better, much better. Original. Look at that. See, so you're getting it. You're getting it. So let's face it. Look at the difference between the face angle there. The face is staying open a little bit better. Arm, le uh, right arm staying straight longer. That's good. That's what we call P9 right there. I'm sorry, P8 right there, where it's just one. That's one step past the impact position where the club is parallel to the ground. When you were over here, when that happened, look at your arm. It was completely bent. This is nice. Look at your head position. Okay, so the drill helps. So, uh, going for feeling the um, post-impact position. Remember when we did it with the impact bag, the post-impact position. And then on up into the finished position with all your weight on the left side. That practicing that feel for where you're going prior to the time you start your swing, that'll be good. Okay, so let's work back down um, down the line view again. So let me redraw these lines that we use for measuring the standard swing path through the waist and through the shoulder. Then take another look at your swing. Comes back up the lower portion of that grid, and then right in there makes the little loop at the top. Loop, and then follows back down. Very edge. This position right in here, though, I think I told you last time, looks real good. The club could be a little bit back further along your arm here, but that looks pretty darn good bring it in from the inside. That ball, by the way, in this shot, we were practicing shooting right at that blue flag. You see it did pull it just a little bit left, but this is what it looks like to be aimed directly at your target. This is parallel to the left of the target. The ball is boom, right at the target. So that's your uh, toes obviously go to the, uh, parallel to the left. So that's like a railroad track goes straight out there. The right side of the track goes right to the target. So, so uh, now you might be wondering who this guy on the right is over here. Well, I'm, let me play his swing for you. This is Grant Waite. He's kind of a similar body type to yours. Um, if you don't know Grant, uh, you know, Tiger once uh, was asked who he would like to look like in his swing if he had the choice of anybody. He chose Grant Waite. Can you believe that? Grant Waite was also the star of the video that I did for Stack and Tilt. He's a big st Stack and Tilt guy. He later became an instructor for um, Mike Weir and Charlie Howell, uh, Charles Howell. 
and um, later than that, also uh, Daniel Summerhays. Now he's out on the senior tour, and we're wishing him well, wishing him very well. He became a really good friend, and um, and he has got some beautiful golf swing, as you can see. <laughs> So I thought, well, it would be interesting to uh, see how does how you stack up because you know, remember when when we measured your swing uh, with my uh, golf analyzer, you were making a really nice uh, contact with the ball. Your your uh, power transfer ratio, the smash factor, as Trackman calls it, is uh, uh, was very high in the 1.4 something high four zero four eight or something like that and um, so we don't want to change too much about this uh, because with only a 92 mile an hour club head speed which is what we measured um, you are you're getting some amazing distance so we don't want to change any of that god forbid I would change that and all of a sudden you start barely hitting it 200 yards so so we don't want to change that but I think that if you if we figure out a way where you can get from there down through the ball without first having to do this, without first having to rotate this shoulder way forward and those hands make that loop there without having to do that. It's really going to add to the consistency. So in other words, you would come back up this way and you would go back down this way. This would be your backswing. This would be your through swing. Backswing, through swing. It's going to make it a lot simpler. Backswing, through swing, as opposed to right now. Backswing, through swing. <laughs> a lot of movement from there to there. So let's see how uh, how you might compare with Grant. Uh, I'll draw these lines for Grant too, so we can see how this compares. That's through his belt. See, it's almost parallel to his shaft, and that's through his shoulder. So there's the same lines. All right. So address, and then let's go to P1, which is where the club is parallel to the ground. P1 for Grant. Looks like this. Slightly different angle as uh, to how the thing was filmed, but you get the idea. I think if it was on the same angle, your hands would look pretty dang similar. And the club looks similar too, although yours is a bit more closed than his is. Okay. Now we go to where the arm is parallel to the ground. That's called P3, right there. And we go to your P3, right there. And that's looking pretty good as well, except for this versus that. See how his club now has not really changed plane. His club has come straight back to there, whereas your club comes from being there to standing up. See that? Standing up. There. Now, so you can see that for, from here, he could go straight back down. You couldn't. You actually have to move those hands this way in order to flatten that club out to come back down. That's the key issue right there. This move to make the club go straight up like that as opposed to keeping the club on plane with the swing. You have to change this, and the way you change it is by rotating your whole body, moving those hands over so that they, so that the club flattens out. Watch. So we're going to go all the way to the top first. That is the top of your swing almost, by the way. Your arm very rarely makes it past parallel to the ground. That's parallel to the ground. And then that's as far up as it goes before you start your downswing, which is actually kind of similar to Grant, but you can see that Grant, look at the how the club is here as opposed to laid back like yours is. The club is right on plane. Otherwise, you know, 
So, if, so if these these hands are going to eventually move up to here anyway. So why not take them right there like Grant does? Why not take them right there and leave the club pointing back this way, as opposed to having to move these all the way forward and flatten the club out? Because from there, watch what happened. He's just going to look at this. He just drops straight down. Look at that. Isn't that isn't that a beautiful thing? He will goes up. There's no movement in those hands. Look at that. He goes up and straight back down. That is some beautiful swing. Okay? That's the top, and you see the first thing that does happens is that he starts moving his hips forward, and his hands come straight back down. There's where the arm is, uh, arm is parallel to the ground again. Club is in, almost in the same place. Look at you. That's a big move at the top to make it consistently every time. See, you're trying to get back to where that club is laid off again. So, you know, that could be giving you some extra whip and some extra power, but I'm sure it's at the cost of consistency. So, that's where you get back to, which is getting back to pretty close. Look at that. Pretty close. Like I say, that could be just a, 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 a parallax uh, issue with the angle the picture was taken from, but mine's right. His, wrong, his is wrong, of course. But uh, <laughs> here's, where the, uh, here's where your arm is parallel to the ground, right there. That's where he is. You still haven't gotten that club facing back on plane yet. And then when the club gets back parallel to the ground, you can see his stays perfectly on plane. bad. Not bad. I don't have enough frames to get in between, but but see how much closer your club is to the ball than his is to the ball, so he's going to develop more power getting that club back there. So this could be, if this if this stayed laid off at the top, it would be, it would still, if it, if it stayed laid back at the top, it would still be laid back when you got here. It would be down in the elbow range, like where, right where this is, okay? See where that is? Right up his arm. This is above your arm, so that the club could come more from the inside. This is right before impact. Looks kind of similar, doesn't it? Not too bad. Not too bad. His club is coming a little bit more from the inside than yours is. Yours, you can see, is actually coming across. Look at that move right there where you're rolling your hands over. Of course, that's what we're trying to fix with that other, with the other drill. This is from before we started the other drill. But you can see how that, your hands come across instead of just going straight out. Whereas his, look at that. Look at his club face there versus yours. See how his is still almost pointing right at the target as he ends up moved forward. Other than that, the leg position is nice. Your hips have turned nice. You know, you could be a little bit more scooted in with your butt. Remember we call that um, uh, thrusting the hips forward. And from there, not bad. Standing up on your toe a little bit more than he does at that point. Look at his club. See how his club, is, the club face is perpendicular to the path of the club. Remember, we talked about that during the drill. Whereas yours is almost at this point, you can't see it anymore. <laughs> but remember, it is almost uh, almost parallel to the path at this point. So that's from rolling your hands over too fast. Watch where his hands come out of the swing here. Mid bicep. See that? And yours are down around your elbow. Tuck the hips a little bit more 
tuck the hips and you know, I like the tilt angle. I like the tilt angle. But if you tuck those hips a little bit forward, that's the extension part. Extend more on that follow through. Look how extended he is, his spine is. He's standing more than straight. If he were to stand up that, that straight, he'd be leaning back. But he's tilted to the right and he's extended fully at this point. And his heel is just starting to come up off the ground. Okay? Bam. Is that a beautiful swing or what? Okay, well, I thought you might like enjoy seeing that. Um, by the way, the top of the backswing, I thought you also might like to see how you compare with our current Open Champion. Oops. Our current Open Champion. God dang it. There he is. Zach. <laughs> so he's not he's not lifting that glove up. Look at that. That's Zach at the top of his swing. Okay? So that's something to think about, something to try. And work on, like I said, if this is producing power for you, you might not want to get rid of that little loop there, but it definitely is causing inconsistency. So if we want to keep working on that and keep videoing so that you can see, actually, when you're doing it, and, um, and we'll do some drills that uh, allow you to take it straight back and straight down, uh, requiring a shorter swing like you did during the uh, other drill that I was doing, that I was showing you. Great work, man. Great work. This is, uh, I hope it's helping you. It's uh, great for me to be involved in and to watch. And, uh, of course, you're a great player anyway. And it um, seems to me very close to being an even greater one. All right. So, uh, see you, Zach. See you, Grant. See you, Tony. Till next time.